Hello, hello, I'm Kaz, and welcome back to the Free to Play Review. Well, I wanted more things to talk about for this series, and Plurium definitely delivered, so this time we're going to be discussing the Gallant Deck of Fate here. Now, this is a fairly new form of an event. It's only been run, I think, one or once or twice before, and the way this works is there are 40 cards in total of mixed rarities, 17 common, 13 rare, and 10 epic cards, and under which you have various rewards. In this case, you can see them highlighted down here below. But yeah, there are 40 cards overall in that combination, and you get a bonus if you happen to get three of the same color in sequence. So three back to back to back, in, in uh, getting three commons back to back, three rares, or three epics. And if you manage to succeed to do that, which is fairly unlikely, but it is nonetheless possible, you have a chance to roll for one of these rewards depending on which sequence you get uh, in tandem. So this deck of fate in particular is a combination of a summon rush, which will extend throughout all the weekends for all the shard shenanigans, as well as champion training. So before we get to my plan and my recommendation for you guys as a free-to-play player, let's talk about the cost of this event if you were to partake in it. So if we scroll down here to the bottom of the info tab, you can see this is how many points you're going to get for each type of shard. So five per mystery shard, 50 per ancient shard, 600 per void shard, and 2,500 per sacred shard. It costs 1,000 points to flip one card, and there are 40 cards in total. Therefore, the entire event would cost 40,000 points. So if you're curious how that would break down for each of the shard types, it would take 16 sacred shards, 67 void shards, 800 ancient shards, and 8,000 mystery shards. So technically, this event this event could be entirely done with mystery shards, but it would take 8,000 of them, which I doubt most of you have. I definitely don't. I have like 5,000 or so. Once again, ancient shards are val undervalued for this type of event, a summon rush in general. So 800 is a ridiculous amount as well for you to be able to max this out. 67 void shards is more in the ballpark of somewhat reasonable if you were trying to go for one of the void events that's going on right now. And 16 sacred shards is a little bit on the high end. It's closer to more of a guaranteed type style. And I don't think you're getting enough value from that personally. Now it's worth mentioning that Saf from HH Gaming did put out a pretty cool video earlier this morning comparing this to a champion chase. And in fairness, I think he was correct in saying that the rewards are better because you will effectively get two legendary tomes along with a bunch of other stuff if you were to fully complete the event by spending the 16 sacred shards. However, my one gripe with that approach is that it's kind of an all or nothing thing where if you don't have 16 sacred just lying around, you don't have the total, then you're at risk of not getting any one of these rewards in particular. So you kind of have to do it all in order to get that value to make it better than a champ chase. You can't do what I what I like to do personally for champ chases is I like to say maybe eight-ish sacreds is kind of my hard cap, which is around 2,500 points and maybe a little bit, bit higher if I get a legendary then I'd finish with mystery shards. And so that would allow me to get to that first tome at 3000 points in the champ chase and then i would decide if i wanted to go for the 5500 which for sacreds two times sacreds i usually don't but the point is that you would have the option to go halfway and half in half out in this one you could pull eight sacreds and not hit the legendary tome just because of the rng of the cards here and so i don't really like that aspect of it and thus i somewhat disagree with his approach but if you do have 16 sacreds and you're willing to go for the Kaimar or the Kimmy or something like that, then by all means, you will get a better reward than a champion chase. Now, of course, that is solely looking at this event as a summon rush. There is, of course, the champion training aspect of it. And for that, we can hop over to one of my tool spreadsheets here where I've done the analysis for the amount of points you'd get for each level of chicken and or making a fully leveled six star champion. Now it's worth noting here that it looks like they actually decreased the values for leveling up champions and, and ranking them up. And so the old values actually were a lot more generous in that you could get around 18,000 points if you were to make a six star champion from scratch, meaning all the two star chickens, all the three star chickens, all the four star, etc. But with the values that are currently in the event, it drops almost by half across the board, maybe 75% some of the time. But it, the same six star champion from scratch would only be worth about 10,000, a little bit or higher than 10,000 points. And for a little clarity here, what cumulative means, this row here just means that it's accounting for you feeding the respective lower level chickens into the higher level chickens and calculating the points based off that. Or if you just solely care about the per capita, meaning each chicken by itself, that's how much points you would get. So to not bog you down in the math, essentially what this equates to is that you can do about a quarter of the event by making one 
six star champion all the way to level 60 from scratch. So for example, what you could do is since this event will take five days, which is pretty on par with a normal champion training event, if you were to make all the chickens and rank up two six star champions, you could roughly do about half of the event, around 20,000 ish points, maybe a little bit extra from the sparring pits and other such things. And then you could also pull, let's say, eight sacreds, which is half of the 16, and then you could do the other half. So you could mix the champion training and the sacred shard pulls and get a decent return on your investment. So with all that said, what is my plan for doing the Gallant Deck of Fate? And we'll cut to the chase here and just tell you that my plan is to skip it. I plan to just focus more on dungeon farming and maybe some Minotaur over the next few days, waiting for the fusion that starts next week. And so I'm skipping it. Um, there is some incentive to pull, in, in, in fairness. There is a 10x going on right now, a few more hours for me, uh, probably earlier in the day for you guys. But these are not uh, the best types of shard to pull for this event, unless you have a ton of voice shards and you really want Supreme Kale, or at least, well, you really want a chance at Supreme Kale. It is a 10x after all. But even after these ends, you do have 2x Sacred starting tomorrow, and then there will be a 10x on Lady Kimmy for the first day, a 10x on... Uh, uh, Prince Kaimar on the second day and then a normal 2x sacreds with no 10x on the third day. So if you are in the position and you really want to chase down that Kaimar and you have the resources kind of like I do in this case, you could definitely chase him down. It might be worth it just to pull 16 trying for the Kaimar and then completing the event and walking away with two legendary tomes. Or kind of doing that hybrid method I mentioned earlier with a little bit of champion training or quite a bit of champion training and some shard pulls as well to max out the event. Another reason why I'm skipping it as you can see here is that I'm fairly deep seven sacreds into mercy and i think my shards would be better spent on a pogo event or a pull one get one event or a one plus one depending on how you want to describe it i like the term pogo but i think my shards would be better spent on that or even that or even potentially a guaranteed uh champion summon like we did like they had for mishinaki or something like that so i'm saving my sacreds hoping that that's going to come after do the 2x and maybe before the fusion as they like to do um in between and I think that's my best choice in this case, just more focused on the legendaries and less so on the legendary tomes, which I know it's unfortunate as the tome chaser that I am, but I just don't like the RNG gambling aspect of it, uh, of the deck of fate. I prefer to know that my rewards, rewards are guaranteed and I know how many resources I have to put in to get them exactly. So my formal recommendation for you all as a free to play end game player would be to skip it if you've agree with me and you don't feel like it's worth it but if you do feel like it's worth it then feel free to champion train champions that you need to develop just work on your account and just flip what you get don't focus on maxing out the event alternatively you could pull for your desired champion if you really want that chance at a kaimar it's a decent time i mean it's effectively a 20x uh, chance to get Kaimar. So if you want to pull for that, pull as many as you'd like, up to 16, I guess, and then just flip what you get and don't worry necessarily about the rewards. Or option three would be, like I've mentioned a couple of times, you do a mix of both, a little bit of champion training, a little bit of shard pulling, and just get where you get, and you hope that your flips are in a good order. Alrighty, so that's going to do it for today's video. Be sure to leave a comment with what your plan is for the deck of fate, and if you're pulling for the Kaimar or the Lady Kimmy, then best of luck with your shards. The spreadsheet that I shared will be linked in the description box down below so if you want to check out the math that i showcased feel free to do so as always if you found this video helpful then be sure to hit that like button down below and if you enjoyed the video then be sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more content just like this one thanks for watching and have a good one